Chapter One of The Little Grey Lady by Francis Hopkinson Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn. The Little Grey Lady by Francis Hopkinson Smith. Chapter One once in a while there comes to me out of the long ago the fragments of a story i have not thought of for years one that has been hidden in the dim lumber-room of my brain where i store my bygone memories these fragments thrust themselves out of the past as do the cuffs of an old-fashioned coat the flutings of a flounce or the lacings of a bodice from out a quickly opened bureau drawer only when you follow the cuff along the sleeve to the broad shoulder smooth out the crushed frill that swayed about her form and trace the silken thread to the waist it tightened can you determine the fashion of the day in which they were worn and with the rummaging of this lumber-room came the odours dry smells from musty old trunks packed with bundles of faded letters and worthless deeds tied with red tape musty smells from dust-covered chests iron-bound holding mouldy books their backs loose pungent smells from cracked wardrobes stuffed with moth-eaten hunting-coats riding trousers and high boots with rusty spurs cross-country riders these roisterers and gamesters a sorry lot no doubt or perhaps it is an old bow-legged highboy its club feet slippered on easy rollers the kind with deep drawers kept awake by rattling brass handles its outside veneer so highly polished that you are quite sure it must have been brought up in some distinguished family the scent of old lavender and spiced rose leaves and a stick or two of white orris root hound this relic my lady's laces must be kept fresh and so must my lady's long white mitts they reach from her dainty knuckles quite to her elbow and so must her cobwebbed silk stockings and the filmy kerchief she folds across her bosom it is this kind of a drawer that i am opening now one belonging to the little grey lady as i look through its contents my eyes resting on the finger of a glove the end of a lace scarf and the handle of an old fan my mind goes back to the last time she wore them then i begin turning everything upside down lifting the corner of this incident prying under that no bit of talk recalling what he said and who told of it i shall have the whole drawer empty before i get through and whose fault it was that the match was broken off and why she of all women in the world should have remained single all those years why too she should have lost her identity so to speak and become the little grey lady and yet no sobriquet could better express her personality she was little a dainty elf-like littleness with tiny feet and wee hands she was grey a soft silver grey too grey for her forty years and this fragment begins when she was forty and she was a lady in every beat of her warm heart in every pressure of her white hand in her voice speech in all her thoughts and movements she lived in the quaintest of old houses fronted by a brick path bordered with fragrant box 
which led up to an old-fashioned porch, its door brightened by a brass knocker. This, together with the knobs, steps, and slits of windows on each side of the door, was kept scrupulously clean by old Margaret, who had lived with her for years. But it is her personality and not her surroundings that lingers in my memory. No one ever heard anything sweeter than her voice, and nobody ever looked into a lovelier face, even if there were little hollows in the cheeks, and shy, fan-like wrinkles lurking about the corners of her lambent brown eyes. Nor did her grey hair mar her beauty. It was not old, dry, and withered, a wispy grey. That is not the way it happened. It was a new, all-of-a-sudden grey, and in less than a week, so Margaret once told me, bleaching its brown gold to silver, but the gloss remained, and so did the richness of the folds, and the wealth and weight of it. Inside the green-painted door, with its white trim and brass knocker and knobs, there was a narrow hall hung with old portraits opening into a room literally all fireplace here there were gouty sofas and five or six big easy chairs ranged in a half circle with arms held out as if begging somebody to sit in them and here too was an embroidered worsted fire screen that slid up and down a standard to shield one's face from the blazing logs and there were queer tables and old gold curtains looped back with brass rosettes ears really behind which the tresses of the parted curtains were tucked and there were more old portraits in dingy frames and samplers under glass and a rug which some aunt had made with her own hands from odds and ends and a huge work-basket spilling worsteds and last and by no manner of means least a big schnitz-covered rocking-chair the little lady's very own its thin ankles and splay feet hidden by a modest frill there were all these things and a lot more and yet i still maintain that the room was just one big fireplace not alone because of its size and it certainly was big many a doubting curly head losing its faith in santa claus has crawled behind the old fire dogs the child's fingers tight about the little grey ladies and been told to look up into the blue a lesson never forgotten all their lives but because of the wonderful and never to be told of things which constantly took place before its blazing embers for this fireplace was the little grey lady's altar here she dispensed wisdom and cheer and love everybody in pomford village had sat in one or the other of the chairs scraped about it and had poured out their hearts to her all sorts of pourings love affairs for instance that were hopeless until she would take the girl's hand in her own and smooth out the tangle to say nothing of bickerings behind closed doors with two lives pulling apart until her dear arms brought them together but all this is only the outside of the old mahogany highboy with its meerschaum pipe polish spreading legs and rattling handles now for the little grey lady's own particular drawer. End of chapter 1